Hi everyone, it's me Lauren. Welcome back to my channel and if you are new here then welcome. So as it's October, I decided to do a video showing you all of my horror films because I love Halloween, I love all things spooky, so it just seemed like the right video to do. Um, I'm going to include all subgenres here, thrillers, psychological thrillers, monster movies, a little bit of sci-fi, because I feel that horror is such a broad genre, you can't really narrow it down to this kind of film and this kind of film, so I'll be showing you my collection of what I consider to be horror films. And as I'm trying to be organised, they're going to be in alphabetical order, so let's get to it. So the first film I have is called Ten Rillington Place. It's based on a true story about John Reginald Christie, who was a serial killer. Um, it's very good, it's very quintessential British 70s film, but it's got um, Richard Attenborough in it, so you can't really go wrong. Um, my next film is 28 Days Later. Really, really liked this film. I thought it was such a unique concept. And next I have 28 Weeks Later. I thought the opening scene was very good, but the rest of the film wasn't that great. I didn't think so anyway. It could have been better. It's just... Mm. And this next one I have is 1408, written by Stephen King, or based on the Stephen King short film. This is the director's cut, and I prefer the ending to this version. I think it's more realistic, as realistic as a Stephen King ending can get. But yes, I really, really like this film. Very, very good. Do you think A Clockwork Orange counts as horror? I do. I really do. It's quite disturbing, isn't it? Um, good film. Really glad I watched it. Very weird, but I liked it. So next one I have, my first Blu-ray, A Quiet Place. I really, really like this film. <laughs> my sister and I were playing it the next day and we died like five times before seven o'clock. We would not do good in this universe. Very, very good use of sound though, I liked it. And this next film I have is called Alice Sweet Alice, but in some places it was released as Communion. This is um, Brooke Shields' very first film. Um, she gets killed during her first communion, no one knows who the killer is. Did not go what I was expecting. Quite weird. And the next film I have is, well, box set, it's the Alien Quadrilogy. I love the film Alien, it's a brilliant film. Um, I've not seen the sequels yet, I don't really do sequels because a lot of them aren't too good. But I've heard Aliens is very good so I might give that a try soon. But yeah, cannot fault the first film. Okay, next I have the original Amityville Horror. <laughs> this scared me so much when I was a kid. It still does now, if I'm honest. <laughs> I can barely watch it without covering my eyes. <laughs> yeah. It still has that effect on me. And next I have an absolute classic, An American Werewolf in London. Love the film. Special effects still hold up very well. Transformation scene, amazing. Absolutely love it. Next I have this very old thriller from the 50s, it's called Angel Face and it's got Robert Mitchum in it and it's weird because I've never seen him where he doesn't play a bad guy. Strange. Um, anyway, she's in love with him and she's just a little bit crazy and she'll do like anything to have him. I thought it was very good. So the next film I have is Annabelle and I got this for my birthday. I watched it, it was um... It was fun to watch. I love the Annabelle doll. I love the way it looks. And I also have Annabelle Comes Home. I can't remember if it's this one or the other one I watched. But yeah, I watched one of them and it was, again, it was fun. Can't expect too much from a franchise like that. And Annabelle Creation. 
again, I'm not sure if it's this one I watched or that one. So I can't tell you what it's about. And next I have um, an old 80s movie called April Fool's Day. She invites her friends to the house, they start dying one by one. You know, typical slasher film, but I enjoyed it. Next I have <laughs> Arachnophobia. <laughs> I'm actually severely arachnophobic, so this was not a comedy for me. I will admit, I screamed the whole way through it. I really don't like spiders, so this film is like my worst nightmare come true. <laughs> and the last film for A is this old horror comedy from the 40s starring Cary Grant, Arsenic and Old Lace. This film is hilarious. It's really, really funny. I think everybody should watch this because... Cary Grant. It's really funny. He's really, really good. Um, he's just got married. Um, he goes to take his new bride to his aunt's house, only to find out that they drug and kill old men. And he's got like one brother who thinks he's Teddy Roosevelt and one who looks like Boris Karloff. It's just crazy. It's so fun to watch. Okay, up next we have The Babadook. This is the film that made me stop watching trailers for horror films because I saw the trailer, thought it was going to be good, I watched this and I have to say I was a little bit disappointed until I figured out what the film was really about and I gave it another go and I loved it. So from now on, if I can, I will avoid trailers for horror films and any film I can really because they do make it out to be something it's not. So if you didn't like it, I'd urge you to give it another go, because I think it's really good. Okay, next, another horror comedy classic, Beetlejuice. I think it counts, right? There are really creepy things happening there, and people die, right? It counts. Um, next is another classic, Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. This is a brilliant film. It gives you a fear that you never thought you could cab. Like birds, what's so scary about that? Oh well they'll pick your eyes out. It's a good film, I really really liked it. I saw that when I was pretty young too and it creeped me out. Up next we have this film called Black Cadillac. I remember watching this when I was little too um, and it did creep me out. I guess, I have not seen it for years but I'm guessing it's kind of like Christine because it's just um, a car that drives around and kills people. But no, I need to give it another watch because I remember it being really good. Next I have the original Black Christmas. Absolute classic. Really, really like this film. I've not seen the remake. I don't really do remakes because I really can't handle gore. I can't stomach it, no pun intended, and a lot of remakes tend to really amp up the blood and the guts and I just can't watch them. So up next I have the Black Mirror box set, series 1, series 2 and the Christmas special. Love Black Mirror, one of my favourite shows. I used to tell people don't start with the opening episode, the first one, because the subject matter is pretty grim. But now I realise um, if you can handle that, you can handle what comes later, which is far worse. Yeah, I think everybody should give this a try. And next I have Black Mirror again, series 3 and series 4. Again, really, really brilliant shows. Some very messed up episodes, but I like them. Up next I have this old horror trilogy called Black Sabbath. It's three short stories, The Telephone, um, The Drop of Water and The Word de Lac. I think my favourite is The Drop of Water because I really like the atmosphere in that one. Up next a somewhat controversial movie, um, The Blair Witch Project. <laughs> I'd um, I don't recall seeing this as a kid, but I remember hearing about the hype and um, 
I can understand why some people were disappointed, but I really liked it. I'm very much a fan of less is more. I like the whole what you don't see is scarier than what you do see. So that's why I really, really like this film. But I can understand why people don't. So up next I have another very, very weird film called Blue Velvet and directed by David Lynch. What do you expect? Um, this guy finds an ear in his garden and that leads him into a whole big... I don't even know how to describe it, it's just so weird. And that guy, Frank, he's very, very scary. I would not want to meet him, ever. So up next I have this really old uh, um, film called Blood and Black Lace. It's about this serial killer stalking and killing models who live in this fashion house. It's um. It's quite um, creative, especially in the kills. It's very Italian giallo. This is the film that would like inspire Dario Argento, who is great. And this next film, I've only seen it once, but I feel like it belongs on the list. It's called Blood Simple. Um, basically, there's a private detective hired to follow this woman. And um, I don't want to say too much in case of spoilers, but everything just like spirals out of control and it was very very tense is the word I'm looking for very tense so this next film is actually an old TV movie and I saw it when I was way too young and it scared the life out of me it's called Buried Alive it's got Jennifer Jason Lee and Tim Matheson in it basically she's unhappy in her marriage she poisons him only the poison doesn't work and he just appears to be dead and he's not and um yeah he gets buried alive and oh my it really 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 frightened me as a kid it's a good film i actually think it's a pretty good film for being a tv movie and um, next i have this film called burnt offerings really 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 good underrated film um they move into this old big huge old house as you do and then weird things start happening it's actually quite creepy it's also got betty davis in so you know it's going to be good okay so up next i have the original cape fear with gregory peck and robert mitchum robert mitchum is fantastic in this he's so gross and sleazy and really really horrible and um Wow, just watching this for the first time, I was just, like blown away by it. I thought it was really, really great. And my next film is the original Carrie. I love this film. I really, really do. I know I say that a lot, but I really love this film. It's like tradition in my family. If you watch it with someone who hasn't seen it, during the end, you have to grab them for the final jump scare. You have to. I'm sure you all know like what this is about she's a teenager she's been like bullied and abused her whole life and then one day she gets pushed too far and she snaps but what nobody realizes she has telekinetic powers so they soon regret what they did to her and this this next film is <laughs> very 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 cheesy it's called cellar dweller <laughs> You can pretty much guess what this is going to be about. I have to show you what the creature looks like. <laughs> oh, I thought it was hilarious. I couldn't stop laughing. I don't even remember what it was about. It was just so cheesy. But this next film, oh my gosh. The Changeling. Absolutely terrifying ghost story starring George C. Scott. In the beginning, his wife and child die, so... He moves into this huge sprawling mansion again, as you do, perfectly normal, and then weird things start happening. This film, my god, I watched it with my mum in the dark and we were just like, <sighs> by the end, it was very, very atmospheric, very, very tense. Brilliant. And then again, another absolute classic, Child's Play. I saw this when I was three, which was way too young and I was terrified of my dolls for ages but I ended up getting over that fear and now I love the film 
I also have Child's Play 2 here, which I saw when I was, again, way too young. And this one didn't scare me as much because I was older, but it still scared me. We did have Child's Play 3, but I can't find it. Um, I don't remember that one too much, except Andy's all grown up and in the army. That's all I remember. Next, um, another Stephen King job, Children of the Corn. Very, very, very classic cult horror. Um, husband and wife travelling through this town. All the adults are gone. Children rule. It's weird. Stuff happens. <laughs> and again, another Stephen King classic. This is Christine. I think this film is one of my favourites of all time. Mainly because I love the car. But I think... Um, I think the special effects really hold up well, especially when he goes, show me, and if you don't want to see it, I don't want to spoil it, but it's a really, really good film. If you like Stephen King, you'll like it. And it's directed by Frank, is it directed by Frank Darabont? No, it's John Carpenter. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, next one I have is The Conjuring. Brilliant film. Um, who directed it? James Wan. He's, I think he's got a real flair for directing. I love like how he does the camera angles and the way it moves through certain rooms like that. I really love the way he directs stuff. He's very, very good at it. And the next one I have is The Conjuring 2. I actually like this one a lot better because um, it takes place in England and I think Valak in this film was brilliant. She was so scary. And my next one I have is called Copycat. It's got Sigourney Weaver in it. Um, I saw this only once. I don't remember too much about what ha happens, but Sigourney Weaver's character gets attacked by this man who's copycatting other serial killers, and I think she has to help track him down. It's actually really, really, really good. So the next one I have is another absolute classic. This is The Craft. Four girls dabbling in witchcraft. What could possibly go wrong, right? Really good film. Um, it's on my rewatch list for this month because I haven't seen it for a while and I can't wait to watch it again. Again, going back to the Stephen King, we have Cujo. This is the film to watch if you want a dog because it will make you not want a dog. Um, mother and son drive up to this secluded house. Cujo beautiful Saint Bernard with rabies, attacks him, they're trapped in their car. Very good film. You feel really bad for the dog, like you know it's not his fault, but you're like, someone stop him! But yeah, poor Cujo. Um, I'm surprised this didn't like, make Saint Bernard's very unpopular. <laughs> and I have another box set here, this is called The Best of Cult Sci-Fi, and there's four films. We got The Thing from Another World, the original from the 50s. We got The Incredible Shrinking Man. We got Creature from the Black Lagoon and It Came from Outer Space. And my favourites are The Incredible Shrinking Man and The Creature from the Black Lagoon. I just think they're the, the best ones. I could watch them over and over again. And moving on, we have our first foreign horror film here. This is Dark Water. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce the director's name because I don't want to butcher it. But um, this mother and her daughter, they move into this really, really old block of flats and there's like water leaking from the ceiling and they find this missing bag that belonged to this missing schoolgirl. And it's just, no one can quite do horror like other countries. They really know how to ramp up the tension. And this one is very, very, very scary. And a bit sad in places. Need to watch that again soon. Okay, this next one I have is called Dead Calm. And um, it's about uh, this couple on a boat and they meet this survivor from another boat. And he turns out to be just a little bit crazy. And um, again, I don't want to spoil it. But it's got Sam Neill, Nicole Kidman and Billy Zane in it. So... A very good cast, I think. Up next, another absolute classic.
classic deep blue sea. Let's be real. It would be scary if that happened to you, right? It's a good film. It's very, very fun. Come on, Samuel L. Jackson getting eaten by a shark after that huge speech. Come on. Don't you love it? Next, I have The Descent. Very, very claustrophobic film. Then it gets very scary. This is the UK version. I much prefer this ending to the American version because, um, again, it feels more realistic. As realistic as a horror film can be. I'm repeating myself. Okay, this next film is called Devil. And it's by M. Night Shyamalan. And it's about five people that get trapped in the lift. And one of them is, you guessed it, the devil. It was actually pretty good. I liked it a lot. And next we have a little bit of Alfred Hitchcock for you. Dial M for Murder with Grace Kelly in it. Good film. Um, she's cheating on her husband. She doesn't think he knows, but he does, so he hires someone to kill her. Only she ends up killing him, and that's not a spoiler, by the way. And it just grows from there. It's a very, very good film. Next, I have this film called Don't Look Now. Very, very, very weird. Um... In the beginning, their daughter drowns tragically, so they go to Italy because he's working on restoring a church. And they meet two sisters, one of them psychic, and she says her daughter is trying to contact them to warn them of danger. This is a film um, you really have to pay close attention to because a lot of the horror stuff happens on like the outskirts of the film. Like they'll walk past and you'll see something that I don't want to spoil. You know, and um, a lot of the dialogue is in Italian with no subs, which I think is a good idea because you feel just as confused as the characters do and you're like, what is going on? I don't understand. And you do need to pay attention during this because if you don't, the ending won't make sense. But I really, really liked it. Next I have a little um, compilation film called Dr. Terror's House of Horrors with Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee and it's five short stories told by a fortune teller to five passengers on a train. Now how can you not like anything with Christopher Lee in it, right? I mean he is like the best. Up next I have Dracula with Bela Lugosi. Um, I've not seen this film for a while but it is an absolute classic. I can't fault it really. I mean some of it's a bit like mm, but that's because it was made in the 30s so we can't expect too much from it. Next I have a horror comedy called Drag Me to Hell. Um, she works as a bank teller. She can't get this gypsy lady an extension on her loan so the lady curses her. Three days of terror before she gets dragged to hell. It doesn't sound funny but it is. But um, after what she did to, hmm, I wanted her to get dragged to hell. Whether she, whether she does or not, that's up to you to find out. Up next we have Steven Spielberg's, one of his very, very first films, Jewel. If you watch this and drive down the motorway, you can't not be terrified. You wouldn't think, like, a film with one character for the main part of it could be so engaging but it is it's a very very simple plot but it really draws you in like he's driving down the road well a motorway and he overtakes his truck and then the truck starts chasing him and it just will not let up it's really really tense so moving on to e we have this film called the entity it's about this woman um she keeps getting attacked by this spirit over and over and over again and no matter where she goes it follows her and she needs to turn to these two um i don't want to say ghostbusters but they're like that to try and help her it's a very good film uh, this next film really really messed up event horizon what did i just see what? i made my mum watch this and she was like 
Sam, got Sam Neill in it and Lawrence Fishburne. Um, they're on this spaceship and they try to. F they, they get a message from this lost spaceship called the Event Horizon and they can't climb aboard and they discover what happened to the previous crew and it's not pretty. Weird film. Um, up next I have the original Evil Dead. Um, this is too gory for me so you can understand why I can't I can barely get through this. It's so gross. Oh my god. So that's why I prefer to watch Evil Dead 2. It's um almost as gory, but it's more comedy, so I can handle it. Um, this one was very, very funny. And I also have Evil Dead 3, Army of Darkness. Absolute cult classic, and again, very funny. <clears throat> okay. No horror collection will be complete without The Exorcist. Um, I absolutely adore this film. I actually um, saw Scary Movie 2 first, and my mum said to me, if you're like that, then you'll like The Exorcist. So I watched it, and I wasn't scared while watching it, but that night I was lying in bed, and I was thinking, she's right outside my door, isn't she? She's going to open my door, then she's going to spin her head around, and I was just like... <sighs> so yeah, I think um, it's still very effective now. And... Absolutely. I don't really like the um, version you never meant to see. It wasn't too fond of all the um, flashing faces here and there, and there's that scene where the doctor's talking to Regan, and her face contorts. I didn't think that was, like, necessary. I thought the only good thing about it was the spider walk. But yeah, I much prefer the original cut. So the next film I have is another horror film, a foreign horror film, of course. <laughs> it's called The Eye. Um, she gets like an eye transplant and she starts seeing weird things. I've not seen it for a couple of years now because it was just way too creepy. And I will try and watch it again, but it was just so scary. So the next film I have is called Fatal Attraction. Um, He's married with a kid, they go out of town, he sleeps with her, he's like, it's just a one-time thing and she does not take kindly to that. Um, famous for popularising the phrase bunny boiler. The next one we have is the Final Destination Thrilogy. I actually saw the third one first because um, I remember the roller coaster scene absolutely terrifying me and like not going to a theme park for a very very long time <laughs> but um, yeah the first one of course is definitely the best one um, don't watch it before you fly or do anything it can really really make you paranoid next I have a super messed up film called Fire in the Sky it's apparently based on a true story about this guy, Travis, who gets abducted by aliens and he's found five days later, all bloodied and bruised and... but um, the main film is um, him, his friends trying to like figure out where he's gone, trying to find him and the detective, he thinks like his friends killed him so he's trying to like get them to confess like where the body is but um, when they find him, that he has a flashback of what he went through, and it messed me up. It scarred me, man. Oh my god, I don't even like to think about it. It's just like the scariest alien film ever. That part, at least. <sighs> so this next film I have is called The First Power with Lou Diamond Phillips and he is um, a detective and he's trying to find this satanic serial killer. Um, I don't remember too much about this but it's very very good. Um, he's um, trying to find this guy but he's dead but he can take the form of anybody which um, makes it a lot harder but it's, it's a very good film. It's not that well known which is a shame. I think more people should watch this. And. Um, up next I have the original The Fly with Vincent Price. <laughs> this is um, the one, the end, 
when you see like the little tiny human human spider fly thing going help me help me as the spider comes to it that's where it came from i have not seen the remake i saw a tiny little bit of it and it was really really gross so i don't really want to watch it it's just gonna gross me out i'll make do with this one and next I have the original Frankenstein with Boris Karloff. Again, can't fault it. Absolute classic. Pioneered the movie monster, didn't it? So you can't really go wrong with it. Next I have this film. I don't think it's very well known, which is a shame because it's really good. It's called Freaks. And it came out in 1932. And it's about life in the circus basically you have um, the main character is Hans this little man who's part of the circus for some strange reason and he has an inheritance and the trapeze artist Cleo she decides she wants this inheritance so she begins seducing Hans but when his friends find out that she's only after him for his money she quickly discovers that you don't mess with the circus folk um, I do wish, it's very very sad because like 30 minutes of footage have been lost forever and I would really really love to see certain parts of it but we'll never will because they're lost and um, I couldn't make this now yeah it's um, not really like a horror film to the last half hour I'd say it's more about like um, her trying to seduce Hans to get all his money and Mm -hmm. It's um, very underrated, I think. It's very, very good. So up next, I have an absolute classic, the original Friday the 13th. Camp Crystal Lake reopens after a few deaths. Um, the counsellors are there early to help set things up, and one by one, they start dying. Absolute classic film. I've seen part two. And I did see part three, which was really funny because it was in 3D. I couldn't stop laughing. But yeah, no, the first one is definitely my favourite. Okay, so up next we have Fright Night, the original. About this guy who's convinced his neighbour is a vampire. Absolutely very good film. I really, really liked it. And the special effects are still really good. I think they hold up. Okay, so up next we have... Frozen, not the Disney one. <laughs> this is about three teenagers who are stuck on a ski lift and then the place closes down so they're going to be trapped there for like five days. Um, it was a good film but these guys deserve an award for the dumbest characters to ever exist in a horror film and that is saying something. <laughs> so up next we have Get Out. I was, don't know, didn't know what to expect when I saw this because again I managed to avoid the trailers for it and I was just, it was weird, I was just like, the sunken place was just, oh my god, um, he goes to his white girlfriend's parents house for this party and um, at first he's a little weirded out by the fact that the um, maids and butlers are black people then it just gets worse from there. Very, very um, creepy and surprisingly relevant. Up next, um, I know what you're gonna say, but go ship. Come on, the opening scene is really good, isn't it? You have to admit that. Even if the rest of the film is just a little bit, mm, but the one thing I remember from this film, apart from the opening scene, is two of the guys they like find these cans of beans and they eat them and they look down and they find out that the cans are full of maggots that's just like that's like the main part I remember from that film it was just so like ah disgusting up next I have a recent one ghost stories I really liked it I like the films that like have like different stories that kind of like connect in some way so i really like this film um was not expecting it to go where it did and i like films like that too but aren't too predictable so i have another box set here this is called ghost stories for christmas the definitive collection and we have um 
Whistle and I'll Come to You, 68 and 2010. We have The Stores of Barchester and A Warning to the Curious. And we have Lost Hearts, The Treasure of Abbot Thomas and the Ash Tree. We have The Signalman, Stigma and the Ice House. And we also have A View from a Hill and Number 13. And most of these are um, got Christopher Lee in them. Of course, he is like a horror icon, so you can't go wrong with them. I haven't watched all of these yet. I have watched Whistle and I'll Come to You, the old black and white one. And it was really, really good. But I need to get around to watching the other ones so I can tell you about them. Up next, I have a little known film from the 80s called Ghost Story. And it's got Fred Astaire in it. It's about these four elderly men they meet every so often to swap ghost stories but then one of them their son is killed and they begin seeing a spirit of this woman and then they realize they have to tell their secret this most terrifying ghost story ever and once again i was not expecting that to happen it was just like whoa and it's just it's very weird seeing fred astaire like that I'm used to seeing him in a top hat and tails and dancing on the ceiling, you know? This next film is actually a mockumentary from the UK and it's called Ghost Watch. Um, it's supposed to be reporters um, inside the most haunted house in Britain and it had real UK TV personalities. We've got Michael Parkinson, Sarah Green and Craig Charles. Um, who were very, very well known on TV at the time. Um, we've got Michael Parkinson in the studio and Sarah Green inside the house and they're playing themselves. And um, what they did, it was actually brilliant. Um, you know, most shows start at like nine o'clock or half past nine or whatever. They showed this at 25 past nine. So people tuning in um, missed the opening credits saying it was a work of fiction and proceeded to lose their minds. People thought it was real, and it came out in the early 90s, so there was no rewind and fast forward and pausing, so you couldn't really see. And there was a lot of like, did you see that? No, 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 that can't have been right. And it's so brilliant, and not enough people know about this, and they only showed it once because people were so terrified and they thought it was real. Um, two children were like, diagnosed with PTSD type symptoms and one man his, he was like a war veteran and he actually like soiled himself and he sued the BBC and um, because it was so controversial they'd never shown it on TV again and I don't want to like build it up because it's deliberately slow to start with like introducing the cameraman and the sound man and let's check out the lights let's check out how this camera works but it draws you in because it feels really realistic so um if you can find a way to watch it i'd recommend giving this a shot because it's really brilliant how they did it and if i was around when it came out it would have fooled me i would have been terrified i kind of wish i was <laughs> i wish i was around to see it okay moving moving on this next film I have is called The Good Son, and it's got Macaulay Culkin and the very young Elijah Wood in it. Um, Elijah Wood's mother dies, and so he moves it to stay with Macaulay Culkin and his family. And he soon finds out that um, little angelic Macaulay Culkin is not as sweet as he seems. Not at all. I mean, you watch this and you realise, no wonder they left him home alone all the time. <laughs> it's um, messed up. Next, going back to the foreign horror films, we have the original Japanese duo, The Grudge. Um, I watched this on TV when it first, not when it first came on, a couple of years ago actually, and I wanted to run out the room. It was so scary. Again, the Japanese really know how to build the tension. It makes you just want to like skip forward so you can. The waiting is the worst part. Waiting for something to happen, and there's a lot of that. And we also have. The Grudge 2, which I haven't seen yet, but um, there's also part 3, I don't have it, but I think they're not released in order, so I think 3 is 1, 2 is 3, or whatever, something like that, but 
I need to watch all three of them in order, just because, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so up next I have another box set here. This is Hammer House of Horror, and it was actually a TV show. Um, one of the episodes is called The Silent Scream, and it's got um, Peter Cushing in it. That one was really good. And the one that sticks out in my mind the most is The House That Bled to Death about this couple that move into this um, haunted house and yeah we can pretty much guess from the title what's gonna happen that one was really good and the silent scream just left me like 